Inga iwi, inga mana, inga waka, inga hau e fa. Hairi mai, hairi mai, hairi mai. Rau ringa tira mā, tēnā koutou. Kā nui ta hari kua, hairi mai nau koutou katoa. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā rā koutou katoa. Kia ora, kia ora ana. Uh, malo ele lei, talok falava. Uh, ni hao. Namaste. Um, bonjour. Uh, guten tag. Buenos dias. And hello and welcome to this. This is the Moments That Matter series brought to you by the Waitakere Ethnic Board. Uh, my name is Greg Ward. It's my absolute pleasure to be joining you here as we look forward towards six weeks of in-depth information about mindset, about wellness, resilience, about all the things that we need to do to continue to thrive, survive and thrive all the way through the challenges that we have with COVID. The, certainly the last seven months have been a particularly challenging time for a great many of us. And of course, one of the biggest aspects of that is to ensure that we have the, the community focus and that we have great support all around us, but sometimes it's difficult to access it. We don't even know where to start. So this series is designed to give ideas, techniques, strategies, some more insight into how we are traveling through this period of our life, this shared period of our life. It's quite a spectacular time, I have to say, both in a uh, very positive sense, but also in quite a negative sense in some uh, instances. So what are we really doing here? We are really sharing ideas. And ideas are the bedrock of our lives, of our community, of all of the facets of us moving forward and ideas are a very very powerful thing so one of the things that I like to say about ideas is this George Bernard Shaw who is or was a, a phenomenal playwright uh, and a philosopher in a lot of ways he said this about ideas if you have an apple and I have an apple and you give me your apple and I give you my apple we simply still only have one apple each. But if I have an idea and you have an idea and I give you my idea and you've give, you give me your idea, we now have two ideas each. And if we turn and move to another person and do exactly the same thing, we share those ideas outwards, we end up growing exponentially this opportunity to share thoughts and concepts and things that work for us in our uh, life in our community and they may work for somebody else and that is the power of connection and we love connection mm. this is really what this is all about our intention with the wonderful support of our uh, partners here foundation north Aotearoa academy uh, as well we are going from here in Auckland all the way north to the top of Northland and we want to really be able to support communities all along the way so I'm really pleased to be here. Uh, I am an immigrant. I came to this country when I was a very small child, and I'll tell you more about that in a short moment. But this series is designed around myself as a host and also as a presenter, uh, but I've got a range of guests who will be joining me over the course of uh, uh, six weeks. Uh, and it's not going to be a, a one-way street. I really want this to be a two-way street. Within the webinar, if you're seeing this on uh, Zoom, uh, I would ask you, please feel free to jump there into the chat uh, and uh, say hello and tell me where you're from uh, when where, where you are currently in the, in the world. That would be a lovely thing to do. I can see we've got a number of participants online right now, so we can see that on the Zoom call. If you're watching this on any of the Facebook Live side of things, uh, that might be a little more problematic for me to get to uh, in the context where I am right now, but I will do my best in that uh, situation as well. Uh, but uh, right now, uh, I'd like to tell you about what's coming up. So we've got six speakers, speakers who are going to be joining us here. Uh, my first guest is joining me uh, on the screen in a short moment, and that's uh, Shalesh Bagwe. And he's a powerhouse, I've got to say. He's an incredibly communal community-minded individual. Um, he's a business advisor, he's a tax agent. Um, he's also the founder of New Zealand World News, uh, which is a channel dedicated to bringing us accurate and positive stories here in our uh, New Zealand situation. Um, and I think it's a, a really beautiful and important thing 
as well. Um, so once again, feel free to throw stuff in the chat if you're watching this on the Zoom. It'll be great to be able to see you there. So let us go and say hello to our guest right here, uh, right now, today. So Shalesh, lovely to have you on board. How are you feeling Likewise, today? Greg. Likewise, Greg Morena. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Thank you. It is it is a real pleasure for me to come on this platform, which is a great theme called Moments That Matter, and it aligns with me and my philosophy, as you rightly said, like uh, uh, with my academy and with my other media and with my other businesses that I own. It's about all about moments and moments that matters. So I'm really thrilled and privilege for me to come on this platform and talk about it. So yeah, I am as excited as you are to start this series, but it's actually, as you rightly said, this is not just a series, it's about engaging between the community and everyone along with each other so that we can share ideas, we can share our support and thoughts, basically. So that's a good start for me to jump on this series. And thank you very much for inviting me as your first guest of honor. Oh, it's look, a privilege it's, to be here. Absolute Greg. pleasure. Um, and uh, I'll just, for our audience, um, Shalesh was instrumental in putting this together as well. I mean, this has been a, a, a wonderful opportunity. And I think that's something that uh, you do, Shalesh, is you, you actually look around and you see opportunities. And yeah. I think that's a really valuable thing from, from a business advisory standpoint. Um, yeah. One of the, the things that I've noticed over the years is that uh, people who are accountants aren't necessarily that focused on <laughs> the wonderful world of opportunity, <laughs> right? Because it's about risk management, mm. not necessarily about yes. looking around not and finding risks. Yeah. And I True. love your focus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah. Should I want you to know about me a little bit? I can yes, talk actually, about let, it. Let's just have a, have a little chat about mm. who you are. Okay. So let's say, well, firstly, let's, let's start right from the beginning. Where were you born? Oh. That's a good question. Yeah, I, was, I come from India, Mumbai, and which is now Mumbai, but it used to be Bombay. So I'm still used to Bombay saying <laughs> Bombay. But yeah, Mumbai is the real name now. So we had to call Mumbai. So I come from Mumbai, India, and uh, I've been here now about 20 odd years plus. So in New Zealand, when I came, it was quite different to, we didn't have many Indians as such. But now we have got quite a bit of Indians. So I think if my memory serves me, it was only about 10,000 people roughly around that time in 20 years ago. But mm -hmm. now it's about more 250,000 plus. So it's quite diverse now. An ethnic group also has diverse than what it was before. So my background, I'm an accountant as an academic, if you call me, uh, that I am academic wise, I am an accountant by commerce graduate, law graduate. Then I also did my financial management for business advisory services and helping people grow their businesses and, and secure their finances. So that is one of my major focus, how to safeguard and how to save safety wise in terms of finances. So that's me. But other than that, like law, commerce, financial management really uh, is, is only academic. It's the practical that I do is more important for me. Other than this is I also, as you rightly said, I'm a community person. So I like to in, get involved in any community activities, like to create events, like to initiate, do things that matters to people, that matters to all humans and doesn't have to be just one particular or another focused. It is all for about everyone. So that's me in terms of my community work. So I do, and I do hold some of the key kind of areas that are mm. liking for me in terms of my community give back. So that's why based on that, I started my academy, which yep. is a charitable trust, Autorova Academy, where I provide Vedic mats, which I brought from India, an additional tool of learning mats for the kids 
and luckily my schools uh, over here some of the schools already have accepted it and and really going very well so at least people have got an alternative and as we always say we should have options we should have alternatives for anything and everything that we do because we are we want to thrive we want to grow so we I have agree. to look for opportunities i agree mm. completely and and i think that it's a really wonderful opportunity to provide an element of cross culturalization that's one Absolutely. of my biggest uh, uh, focus areas uh, within the work that i do is uh, the idea that we we currently are essentially siloed you know each mm. of our communities and each of our cultures are, are siloed uh, but i was yeah. given this phrase by david morgan who's the chief pilot for air new zealand and he says i, mm -hmm. he says, I don't call them silos he says i call them cylinders of excellence <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, that's a good way of looking at it. Absolutely. Perfect. And, and the truth is that. So we, we tend to provide ourselves with barriers between our yeah. cultures. And I really want to see those barriers being uh, you know, pushed away uh, to be slowly and gently broken down so that we can actually communicate, that we can understand yeah. one another. And I, this is such a wonderful opportunity to be able to do mm. this as a series, to be able to share yeah some of the experiences that we have with the range of speakers that we have, and we've got some phenomenal speakers coming in. Um, and uh, uh, almost every single one of our presenters is an immigrant in their own right. And uh, the first generation immigrant coming to this country, having to restart. And I'm really fascinated by that because I've got my own immigrant story as well, as I'm sure that you right. have. Um, and I'd yeah. love to know the, what was the catalyst? What was the catalyst for you to come here to New Zealand? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I do like nature. I'm very close to nature, kind of say, you can say I'm very much into nature. So nature means all the beauty that we see around us other than, so humans are a beautiful creation of the nature. And just like the natural other living beings like plants and trees and all of that, they are all beautiful to walk around and go around and see around. So just like that, I see that humans are all comes into different diverse things, but they are all much to cherish and support and come together and work together. That's, I love that kind of. So nature was one of the things and New Zealand has got some beautiful sceneries or landscapes that, uh, that was attracted me. And it's a funny story. I was actually in Dubai at that time when one of my American friend, who suggested me to come to New Zealand. And I didn't knew anything about New Zealand. I didn't even know there is a country called New Zealand exists, to be honest. And this is my real experience, which I'm sharing with you, is uh, I have got no clue whatsoever. And this guy tells me, jump to New Zealand and go and draw your pictures and paints and landscaping. And I said, what, Where, what is that? And then he shows me on the website, and then he tells me that this is what it is and you love drawing and painting. So why don't you go and do that over there? And I, I was really thrilled and attracted. So I didn't knew how to apply and what to apply. And that time it was quite luckily, the system was quite different for immigration. So we had a point system at that time. And he said, no, no, look, if your points are there, you might get, you don't have to travel there to get a job or anything. And I said, really? And so, I applied at that time, the position was uh, as per the point system. And uh, sitting in Dubai, I got my residency. So I didn't have to come to New Zealand to get a residency. That's how amazing it was. And that's how beautiful it was. But I had no clue economy wise, what New Zealand is and all that, and whether we get a job or not, and what is welfare state system. No clue whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I just thought it is like, okay, I had to find a job. I had to do, if I don't get, then I have to come back. That's what I always was thinking. I didn't knew what residency means. I didn't knew what state welfare country means at that point. So after coming here, I think I was, I got uh, straight. I was very much into, because we are used to, as an Indian culture and as a, our tradition, we are used to, do everything on our own and do your get a job and not like depend on anyone that is what independency has been taught to us as a family the family support as a joint family but individually everybody has to go and work right 
So when I came here, I just had to find work. And so it was a experience that uh, in those days, in spite of my 15 odd year experience in Dubai and India and everywhere, Singapore, I was told that you don't, you have got too much experience and you are not fat. And I said, but I got the residency, but I don't have a job. And it was really, uh, I mean, when I look back now, it is still exist some of the things, but I think after COVID-19 things will have changed and will change for good. Because it's not about the experience that you only need, your mm. qualification, your experience, and you are brought into this country thinking that you will get a job easily. Yeah. But no, I had my struggles, but I think I didn't took it as a struggle because I was taught to find a job yourself. You, nobody is gonna give you. I just literally walked into streets of Queen Street and all offices straight away, jumping and barging in the offices to find a work. And uh, luckily being in my accounting profession, I got the job in an accountant's firm. At that time, it was April when I came here. So it was like March year ending had happened and they were looking for some uh, interns or volunteers and small, uh, not volunteers, but like some startup accountants to work. And during that time, so I was yep. lucky enough, but it was my, I would say it was not lucky enough. It was basically, I would say that I had that intention of going and finding work for myself, where I knocking the door and not just rejections of CV, rejection letters, more than 100 in 10 days was good enough lesson for me to understand that I'm not going to just write CVs and send to companies and wait for rejection letter. I have to do something. I have to get out, knock the door and be not shy about anything. And I was never shy as such, but I was- I'm just gonna- I I'm gonna, can understand. I'm gonna jump on that for a moment because mm. that's a, a really critical part of an immigrant's journey, isn't it? It's mm. that tenacity yeah. because you're, you're turning up into a country where you have limited connections uh, yeah. limited opportunity and the only thing you have to go on is your own level of confidence your own yeah. belief in your own abilities and your mindset um, and mm. I, I think regardless of the of the technical knowledge and the skills that we have the, or the training that we have it's really mm. here isn't it this is where the absolute process has to happen yeah. mm. so, how so did you it's all that? a how did mindset you find that mentally it's the mindset yeah, it's the mindset mentally. It's the mindset that people have. And I believe, I must not believe, but I'm a seeker. I don't believe in things and do things. I like to seek. I like to be curious about it. Even if I don't know, I say I don't know. And that's one of my, actually, you can call it, that's one of my strengths. But people don't like to say I don't know. They just want to say that I know it and I know partly. But I, if I don't know, I don't know. And it gives me an immense possibility to know many things if I say I don't know. And that's one of the things which uh, I was carrying with me as an independent mindset that I don't have to know everything and I don't know anything about this country. So why should I say I know? So why, why can't I learn more about it by saying I don't know? So that I can actually know what it is rather than me assuming and preempting things it was good for me to just be what I am, be who I am, and just say honestly that I don't know. And so moments as this is more aligning to me, moments that matters is because I always consider myself and one of my friends, she told me like, when I say, you know, these are my leftover moments. And she says, no, no, this is the beginning of the moments. And I say, either way, look at it whether you look at it as a beginning of this moment or in the leftover moment, it is still your only moment mm. that matters. It is only moment that matters that you can make it for yourself and for others. And so that's why it aligns with me. This moment that matters is absolutely spot on. Well, one of the things so, yeah, that so, goes off the back mm. of that, uh, Shalesh, is uh, one of the phrases that uh, I've, I use and I've coined um, for this mm. is this, uh, the, the past is gone. You cannot change yeah. it. The future Absolutely. is uncertain. You cannot rely yeah. on it. All we have mm. is the present yes. moment. So live mm. now, live in this Absolutely. moment, right? That's all we have. Yeah. That's not to say that we don't plan for the future. 
and that we don't no. learn from the past. But if we can only affect this, then yeah. that's where our focus needs to be. And we can solve a lot of our challenges by simply bringing and our it. focus down into this present moment right now. 100%, 100% agree with that. So yeah, those, I think people's mindset, and if you look at my starting journey when I came here, and when people talk about COVID-19, this journey that people are experiencing, it's nothing different, whether you call it beginning or whether you call it leftover moment, because people say, oh, nothing is going to happen now after COVID-19. Mm. I'm going to be not doing anything. I'm going to die. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, I'm not, I won't be able to do anything all those uncertainties and uncertain are exactly same when you start your journey or when you start a job or when you start to shift a country from one country to another country those those thoughts are always there with you and so it's no different for me now uh, in that regard because it's it's the mindset that you have if you consider this as a, your moments and the best moments, and you want to do something about these moments, then you you just have to do it. That's it. That's what I would say. But yeah, coming back to those, um, if you are asking me about those uh, experiences and the challenges at the start when I came, and now during the COVID-19, yeah. the challenges, the challenges are, for me, you know, the most important uh, aspect that I uncovered myself and for everyone, probably they might resonate or relate to it, is uh, I was never having a problem of working from home because I always work from home, being in my accounting and business advisory services, most of the time I work from home. So for me, it was no different. But when the COVID-19 hit and when everybody was asked to stay home, this is where the challenges begin for me. And those were the simple challenges. The freeing of your mind was freezed, I call it. I call it the, you know, the F3F, F, like the fear and then um, all, of, all of those uh, finances, fear, these were the thoughts that were coming. And not only that, but basically simple things like, okay, uh, not feeling to wake up because there is no one to, all around me, surrounded me, they are all in the same boat. They are also home, locked down, kind of, you know. So what am I gonna do uh, waking up early or doing this faster? There is no point. So these were the challenges which I uncovered that I have to, pass through. I cannot just say that, okay, every, the world is stopped, so I will also stop. The, the, the surrounding is not happening anything, so I will also have to just be uh, doing nothing, you know, that kind of thing. So that was a big challenge for me, like even waking up and early, which I used to, or my routines, you can mm. call it, everybody's routines were quite disturbed because of the mindset. And it again comes back to the mindset. It's not comes back. So, but I, I quickly realized and noticed that no, this is not what I want. This is like I am following others. I have to follow what I have been doing. So, if I'm been waking up and if I'm been doing this on a routine day, then I have to do keep doing this and not wait and let the world not wait for the world to change. You know, let me change myself which means let me accept the realities. And that's the, that's the good thing about my mindset is I change my mindset quite quickly in terms of understanding the realities and uncovering my own self. So, and that everybody should uncover themselves because if they don't push themselves hard, nobody is gonna push them. And if they expect somebody will come and push them, mm. then that's not gonna happen. So, because everybody has their own challenges of pushing themselves. So pushing ourselves is the only way if you change your mindset. That's what I think it's a good old saying, even Mahatma Gandhi said, like, if you want to be looking, if you want to see the change, you have to be the change. You can't change the world, but you change yourself and the world will change automatically because you are looking at a different way. You're mm. dead right. I mean, I think there's the elements of uh, what we're talking about is uh, extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. 
right? So we don't have somebody yeah. outside of us trying to motivate us. It's it's us internally needing to find the way yeah. that works for us in terms of motivating ourselves. And it, and it's not about um, constantly telling yourself, no, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. It's going to be great. That's part of it. But it really is about having the confidence in your own abilities, being able to kick away things like imposter syndrome, you know, that really yeah. do hold us back. Procrastination is a really big thing, particularly when we become fatigued or if we are yeah. um, uh, have, have a number of challenges or problems that we've got to be solving and taking up a lot of brain space. And so we tend to, uh, and there's fear as well, right? Fear of the unknown, yeah. fear, of, fear. Uh, yeah. fear of success, fear of failure. Yeah. All those different fear of success. Of us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fear of success, fear of failure, you know, finances, uh, that what will happen to my finances. And people are so much bogged down because they think mm. if we don't have finance, we are not going to be happy. If we don't have finance, we are going to be really always in the dark. That's what they think. Finance has, has been given so much importance in the current situation that if you look at it, like, they have lost the human touch yes but they want they want the money in the bank but they don't want people around them or surrounded by them it's so funny um, that we have come to that stage where material things has been given the mm. top priority rather than the people and simple things like you know going with a friend or going with your colleague and having a coffee gives you more joy than just putting money into your bank and say, I have got money and telling everybody about it. It's not going to make any happiness, but that's what their mindset is. Uh, so it's quite idea funny on that as well. Uh, Shilesh. I think one of the, one of the phrases for me is whenever I find myself financially constrained and let's face it, we all do from time to time, we all do. So yeah, yeah, particularly. Yeah. So I'm self-employed. I've, I've been self-employed for the last 20 years, uh, but there's yeah. always ebb and flow. So sometimes it's tight. Sometimes we're flush with, with uh, resources. But I always come back to this one thing. I always say to myself, I'm not sitting in the gutter with no shoes on. You yeah. Know, the, you know, we can put, put, our, put our challenges into context. We have, yeah. we have Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I've got shelter. Mm. I've got food. Mm. I have got security. So all those things. And let's face it, we are better here in New Zealand, on my life is better 100%. than probably 70, 80% of the world. We are, mm. we are so fortunate to be here. And as an immigrant, I thank my parents immensely for their mm. foresight in coming to this yeah. country and bringing three children with them uh, on a journey of the unknown. Because once you arrive, yeah. there's no turning back. <laughs> there's no opportunities, right? 100% agree, Greg, 100%. And that's why I call my 3F, which people say, this, sorry, that's not 3F, means not those 3F, but these are three real F, which is fame, which people are looking for fame, which people are always fear of having failure and failure. So failure is a fear, fear is a fear, and fame also is a fear, whether I will get fame or not, you know? The three align with these three Fs, which I call it. And it's, it's important to understand that during this time, you don't look at these three F. You don't look at fame. You don't look at failure. You don't look at fear. What you look at is more opportunities, more possibilities, more initiatives to do different things. And more and more, because I, as I said, like I call myself, I am also like you, Greg, being self-employed for many years and more than 20, 25 years now. And I always felt that you being a self-employed comes all challenges. However, mm -hmm. there is no such thing as there is no challenges. And challenges are nothing but your moving forward experiences that you would like to take those experiences and keep moving forward. So people get fear and failure and fame and they want all this to do that along with them but rather than looking at the brighter side like okay i want opportunity where do i get who do i connect what do i do if i want to do different things and new things because these are my leftover moments i am not able to do this again if a thought comes to me to do something i just like to keep doing it 
rather than you know making it so yeah being curious and i think pandemic has shown us a lot of curiosity if you look at it everybody is trying to understand the realities uncover the curious about many things during the pandemic things curious about many things that are existing that they were not aware of it many things that were complacent and they didn't knew why it is like this and why it is not like that so now they are thinking from the other point of view like why it is like this why it is not other way and this is a good experience for every single person no matter where they come from which experience they have got and which background they got one thing is uh, sure that now they are looking at the other side of the coin which they were only looking at one side of the coin which was showed to them told them whether with their family or by traditions it came along but they were only looking but now they are using their own power to look at other avenues also they have uncovered many uh, i have seen that also we have uh, myself i have uncovered so many things that i could be doing rather than not doing and so i would like to keep pursuing those new things rather than waiting for the old things to happen or come back the old things as you rightly said before once is gone past is gone it's gone future is uncertain we don't want to look at it this is my moment let's make this moment a better one for us and for everyone so i think uh, this is where uh, my challenges were all the time that i have to do this uh, my challenges is was simple simple things that i was able to do was thinking with my friends surroundings and all that neighbors and all that businesses clients and all that i used to go and meet or personally all of a sudden it was like a standstill and as i said like i am more of a people social person so i like to be in the people with the people rather than not with the people mm. so um it becomes very hard for those kind of things so yeah challenge and but when i look at challenges of myself and you ask me my challenges and everybody should ask themselves one question i feel in my view is if i am facing this challenges or these issues or this concerns look at other people also they are also facing something else yet they are there yet they are surviving so why can't you be survive and here i would like to quote um, uh, if you allow me to jump, uh, talk about one one of the greatest things in the last 3 years that we have seen mm -hmm. so much challenges the country has faced so much challenges the nation has faced whether it was the christchurch attack whether it was the deadly volcano eruption whether it was the pandemic whether it was the economy downturn of our nation and whether it was the lifestyle of all our people has changed drastically and we are adapting but look at one thing common in this mm -hmm. is our leader and i don't want to just say it because i want to say it but i look at every single leader in in our country in our nation and say how they must be doing so if our prime minister for example jacinda ardern when she has gone through all this and she is responsible to make it happen better for everyone so challenges that she must have gone through and also a baby with a baby at the at the start when she came in all these things and yet she was resilient and yet she was showing everyone that it can be done and so people responded to it and i think that was the best part of the leadership i have seen but i think we all have leaders in in us we all have that leadership qualities yes it is a matter of uncovering ourselves if they can do it and if you look at them and they can do it then you can also do it because they are no different to you and unfortunate it is that we don't Uh, we don't empower ourselves i say it and so during this pandemic i think my challenges my real experiences i am keeping every single moment uh, empowering myself my moments to be empowered 
And that's why I am absolutely um, on par with your title and the theme that you chose is Moments That Matters. So it's uh, absolutely fantastic to see those things are happening here now. And this will, this has, this is also giving an opportunity for everyone to actually speak up their mind and start the dialogue now. If not now, then when, you know? That time never comes, time just goes, as you said, and future is uncertain. You don't have to worry about the future. You just worry about this moment. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take that so, moment there to actually say to our audience out there, if you are joining us here on Zoom, feel free to throw some uh, questions or comments into the chat uh, or into the Q&A. Chat's, chat's probably the best way uh, to do that, and then I can uh, access that there. If you are currently watching this on the uh, live stream on Facebook, um, on either my site or the uh, Watakari uh, Ethnic Board site, uh, that's maybe a little more challenging to respond to comments on that, but feel free to add comments there as well. I do what I can here in this uh, process. Uh, but um, we're talking about moments that matter. And certainly this last seven months through the COVID uh, process that we've had in New Zealand, eight months coming up now, uh, it has been very challenging, particularly with the multiple levels of lockdown, uh, with the differing levels around New Zealand, um, particularly with the, with the Auckland uh, sector, and different uh, industry sectors have been uh, affected quite differently, depending on where you are. Hospitality, for example, or events have been severely, severely limited. So that's been a very big challenge across those spaces as well. Um, so uh, what I would like to do, um, Shalesh, I would like you to stay with us. Um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the experiences I've had and hopefully be able to share some of the techniques and strategies that have helped me over the course of this period as well. So I'm loving chatting with you here this morning and uh, stay on the line, don't run anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we will see you very, very shortly. Um, and uh, if, if you want to just, if you can mute yourself at your end, that will probably be a uh, valuable thing there. And we will see you. Don't hang up, whatever you do. And we'll see you in just a short moment as well. So Shalesh Bagwe there and uh, telling us about his uh, particular journey, his immigrant story, um, some of the mindset processes that he uses to maintain his way through business and uh, his life as well. Uh, and that's one of those really big important things, isn't it? Is that we all learn things from our lives and whether we uh, take a short time to learn these things or it takes a, a lot longer, it depends on how much focus we put on ourselves and how much information uh, we, we think is valuable to our own uh, story. So what I'd like to share with you is a little bit about me, a little bit about my story in this Moments That Matter. So I'll tell you a little bit about my backstory. So I arrived into New Zealand in 1972, which uh, seems to be a significantly uh, long period of time <laughs> ago. And uh, this here is my family. Um, this is uh, my parents, uh, Muriel and David Ward, my uh, brother Nigel and my sister Linda. I'm the little guy who is sitting there on his mother's lap, looking out to the side of the frame, already looking for further opportunities uh, across the uh, world. And we came to New Zealand uh, for the princely sum of £20. We were the final flight of the £20 POM what was called then the 20 pound POM scheme, uh, traveling from the north of England all the way through to New Zealand, which took uh, three days uh, to arrive in. So a three day journey in those days on a DC-8 was uh, pretty uh, challenging, but with uh, a family on board as well, as you all know, as you all have gone through these experiences and the processes of traveling from some other country, wherever you were originally residing, to come to New Zealand, um, a land of huge hope, of huge possibilities. And having traveled extensively across my life, my first journey back to England was a eye-opener to see where my parents had grown up, the environment that they had, the economy that they had, and the decision that they'd made, which was a momentous decision to come all the way to New Zealand with a family in tow, to start a new life was huge. And of course, once they were here, they had to work. But I think this is an integral part of what it is to be a migrant to this country, is that 
you have to make it right there's no to, there's no second chance you're here you're going to make it so we tend to work with greater tenacity with a greater sense of a work ethic because that's just the nature of who we are as immigrants and I think that stands as an incredibly good stead not only here in New Zealand but also around the world as well so what I wanted to share with you is some of the things that uh, worked for me. I couldn't have done this in the UK. I doubt whether I would have had the opportunities. Um, I've worked in film, I've worked in television and on the stage. Um, I've trained as an actor, as a musician, as an entertainer. Uh, I've ended up working in uh, multiple day conferences and events all over the world. I've uh, learned languages, I've, I've met all sorts of different people, all because we came here to New Zealand. The opportunities are absolutely myriad and certainly cannot wait to see what the future may bring. This has been a tough year. This has been without a doubt, possibly one of the hardest years for me personally, from a personal standpoint and also a business standpoint. And I think that's something that we all can share in. When I initially put the webinar up, I put a question in that webinar and I asked people, what has been the most challenging thing for you around the COVID-19 pandemic? And the answers that have come in have been really indicative of what people have been going through. And I'm going to share some of these with you here. So worried for our future as a country, um, uh, keeping family safe while out working as an essential worker during lockdown level four, hearing uncertainties um, of migrants, and this is a really powerful thing, right? So especially when you have limited connections and limited community and limited strong relationships in, in place. Yes, without a doubt, we are going to experience those, those challenges. Um, and it is a process of learning more about ourselves as well to be able to uh, mitigate against those challenges there. Uh, doing more work online, maintaining a high level of trust that people provide 100% of efforts while working from a home setting. And that is an interesting thing, isn't it? Because there's a level of control that goes with that. It's like when we're worried for our staff, we're worried for our workers, we're worried for our colleagues that they aren't going to do the work that we're hoping that they will do. Interestingly, there's a wide variety of responses to that. Uh, some people thrive in this home environment and some people just don't it's just the nature of it you know we need the community and the connection the people around us uh, we need as i mentioned before extrinsic or intrinsic um, motivation so for, for those people who find it difficult in this setting having that community feel around them is a really big part of it so how do we mitigate that and some of these challenges are are uh, incumbent on us reaching out actually taking the the time combating the fear that can come in when we're actually wanting to make out a network. It's not everybody has the same personality type. We don't always have the luxury of being able to just reach out and grab people and talk to people and, and in, a, in a confident way. Uh, and especially if there's some element of cross-culturalization as well, there's some challenges within that. We, we don't know where we fit within, the, within our, our environments. And so there's some challenges there too. Uh, people talking about the isolation, talking about the lack of freedom that we have, um, cancelling some significant plans that we've had for the future. And I certainly have done that as well with my family. Uh, one of the more tragic elements here is losing family members and being unable to be with them and to be able to support in these times. And I'm talking to you about these because I want to share the experiences that our community here is telling me and, and is it is allowing me to share with all of our viewers here. And I think that's a really very powerful thing. When you're creating high performing teams, one of the things about creating a high performing team is going through a level of shared adversity. And I think the challenges we've had over the course of this year have created a very strong sense or a stronger sense of community in some respects and the fact that we've all gone through them in our own personal way, but in a general sense, we're all going through these challenges has created a playing field that gives us this opportunity to connect deeper, better with, with more truth in it. And that's a really powerful part of what we do as humans. To understand other people, you really do need to understand yourself. 
And one of the keys to that is how we react to opportunities that are around us. Because although we have a significant amount of challenges that have hit us over the course of this COVID period, it has also come on the obverse with opportunity. And opportunity is a very, very powerful thing. What I've found as I've studied people, and I'm a fervent student of human behavior and watching how groups work, and I've noticed that there's roughly four, uh, four ways of dealing with opportunity. The first of these is what I call this unconscious inaction. And unconscious inaction is basically a sense of you don't even know the opportunity exists. You can't see an opportunity because you are focusing deeply on the challenges that you have rather than the external, um, the opportunity that's coming in. And this is not the same for everybody as well, because uh, we don't all have the same social challenges. We don't have the same financial challenges. It's very hard to focus on yourself when you're worried about where your security comes from. And I mentioned with uh, Shalesh, we were talking about uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So we need food, we need shelter, we need security. And if those are met, then we can start to look at the higher levels of self-actualization, like actually becoming, being and becoming more than we actually are in the moment. So if we're in this state of unconscious inaction, we can't see opportunity. And as a consequence, we can't react to it. Uh, and also, this is a, in, a, in this state, it's very easy to look around and say, oh, everybody's got more opportunity than me. Uh, everyone's doing better than me. Uh, and, it's, and it's always a, the grass is green on the other side of the fence. This is, is a challenging place to be in. But what I can say is that you can move from this state, but it requires you to pause, to step back and actually do some introspection and be able to look at yourself. Um, and hopefully you have got all of the other factors uh, looked after, which is your food, your security, your shelter, and your a sense of community that you have in place. The next of these is conscious inaction. And this is where we can see opportunities, but we're just not ready to take advantage of them. Or we might be in a, in a fear state, which means that we're unable to take advantage of the opportunity that comes up. And we might see like the opportunity of, of working from home, right? Uh, for some, it's been forced upon them. For others, they've just embraced this. We've all gone about this in a different way. And so this, when you are consciously inactive, when, when it comes to opportunities, then it means you're actually pushing away the opportunities that are, are coming towards you and not taking advantage of them. This again is an opportunity for be able to move out of this state, but it takes again a moment to be able to stop, reflect, look at yourself. And what I'm going to allude to over the course of these is it's all about the moment. It's all about this moment right now, this shared moment we're experiencing here together. In fact, we're never going to experience this moment ever again in the same way, the same shape. That's why it's called the present, right? This is our present. And so what we choose to do with this moment has a significant bearing on every single thing that we do from this moment forward. And the way that we can access this moment is by stopping and listening with every single fiber of our being, listening for the beat of the world, listening for the ebb and flow of the world around us, the ebb and these conversations that are happening. We're listening for that, this. And it's when we're in that state that we can see the opportunities arrive. The next of these phases is conscious action. So that's where we're actually seeing the opportunities here. We're able to act on them. We're able to react to them. But we're still having to force ourselves to do it. Uh, it may not come naturally. And that's normal. Very normal kind of process. Because it's all about growth. We're all about growing. And the fourth of these states is what I call transformative action. This is where we have got to the stage where we're not even worried about our responses anymore. We're able to see opportunities. We're able to react to them. So these four states, I would like you to think about where you are in these four states currently. Where are you situated? I don't need to know this. I don't want to know this. This is for you. I want you to understand where it is that you're currently sitting in those four states of action. So have a think about it. Unconscious inaction, conscious inaction, conscious action or transformative action. Have a think about that. Know where you are. And the second question I'll ask you around that is, 
are you where you need to be? One of the things that we often say is what you can measure, you can manage. And so by doing a quick check, where do I fit? How comfortable am I about taking on opportunity? How comfortable am I? Where am I in a position ready to move, to change, to morph, to move forward? With all of the challenges that we've experienced here through COVID, can we move forward? So that's all I need to know about that. Do you know where you are? And are you where you need to be? Think about those things and see if you can apply them to the situation that you find yourself in. So I want to touch a little bit now on some resilience strategies here, uh, because these are quite powerful things for us, particularly when we find ourselves in stressful situations. And we have definitely found ourselves in stressful situations over the course of this year. And again, I'll invite you, if you are currently watching on Zoom, feel free to throw a comment there into the chat. It's always nice to know that you're still there and somebody's still out in the world. So um, have, a, have a look there. And we'll talk a little bit more about these as resilience strategies. And the first of these, it's a no brainer, really. It's moderate or avoid alcohol. It's a critical thing. So uh, I always say this, that alcohol is not a performance enhancer, um, but it also has some challenges in terms of being a uh, depressant. Uh, and it really doesn't work well when you appear that up with stressful situations. Alcohol is also a killer of sleep it will really uh, impact on the quality of your sleep. So it's a very a valuable thing to not actually um, use that if you can at all. Engage in an exercise routine. And this is something that I do personally, uh, and I make sure that I'm doing this at least 30 minutes of exercise, at least three days a week, uh, and make sure that, that in that 30 minutes that I'm actually getting myself up, getting quite hot and sweaty within that process and making sure that the heart rate gets an elevated as well. Engaging in an exercise routine does a few different things. One of these is that we're setting goals. So each of the time I set my alarm at 5.15 in the morning, I get up and I go to the gym if I'm heading to the gym. It's sometimes very difficult for me to do that. Um, I have a fairly challenging mental health history and I'll be sharing that in more depth as we carry on through this series. But one of the things for me is that I'll wake up and I don't want to get up, I don't want to move. And I think this is that's probably fairly normal for everybody. But what I do is I trick myself into getting up by saying things like, all you've got to do is open your eyes. Just open your eyes. Just one thing, one tiny thing. That's all you've got to do, open your eyes. And so I do. And then once I've opened my eyes, I say, well, seeing as your eyes are open, why don't you slip your foot off the bed? And so eventually I do. And I keep on doing this tiny incremental goals, so micro goals. Until I'm standing, I'm dressed, I'm ready, and I go out the door and I hit the gym and I set a goal for myself on, on what I'm doing from an exercise standpoint, and I finish it. And each time I'm doing this, I'm creating a goal and I'm achieving it. Tiny ones, but each of them build up, build up, build up. So having this, not only is it the endorphin rush you get from exercise, but it's also the fact that you're creating the goals, which makes a really big thing too. Maintaining a nutritional balance, right? Fast food. Try not to uh, try to avoid that at all costs. Try and have a balance: good greens, vegetables, five plus a day in terms of your vegetables and fruits, good proteins, good carbohydrates. It can be challenging, but you can achieve this. Um, it, you don't have to uh, have a lot of money to be able to eat well. And in fact, if you are uh, spending a lot of money on takeaways, there it, it is such a false economy for the amount of time and effort because of what you can purchase with from a takeaway standpoint and from actually purchasing fresh food and manufacture, manufacturing it yourself. So maintain a nutritional balance, it will pay you dividends. Um, it, you may need nutritional supplements as well, but um, that's something you need to talk to your health provider about as well. Talking about this sleep, aim for eight hours sleep a night if you can get that uh, as, a, as an adult. It is a incredibly valuable thing to make sure that you are constantly being empowered with sleep. And my final little point here is this, to take time to focus on gratitude. Really, really important. One of the keys here is that if you're focusing on someone else or you're thinking about thanking somebody else for somebody, it's very difficult to focus on your own challenges at that same moment. And so gratitude is a very powerful thing. A chap by the name of Martin Seligman came up with this concept of positive psychology and he is really the, the guru of positive psychology and he talks about gratitude in very strong terms about it's a really measurable effect 
for somebody to actually be grateful for something it has an, a measurable effect on your mental state so take a moment what are you grateful for is it the food on your table is it the friends around you and it doesn't need to be massive but if you do this on a daily basis and have a think and actually put some focus and time on it you'll come across in a very very different way so i hope those as some techniques which I'm using on a daily basis are actually valuable for you uh, as well. And what I'd like to do right now is I'm going to get uh, Shalesh to join us back here uh, on screen in just a short moment, um, just to, uh, I'll make sure that uh, Shalesh is uh, ready and raring to go. And he definitely is, which is uh, very valuable. Um, yeah. So let us now go across there. Ah, we might get you to uh, turn your camera back on if you can there, uh, Shalesh. Oh, I'm, you're out of my frame, but that's all right. I'll just come back to my studio for a second. And <laughs> the picture of a gorilla. Ah, some immediate action strategies. We might just jump from that to this. All right, cool. And let's get you back on screen there, Shalesh. Bear with me two seconds as we get you there. And you're almost there. I think I might have just lost you for a second there. Uh, can you hear me? I can Great. hear you, okay. Uh, but I don't think I'm getting your feed All right. Okay, let's just see what we can do with that. Coming back to you now. Must have been the link. Yes, so the, 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 there's some challenges obviously that go with that, with a uh, <laughs> trying yeah. to ensure that we've got you uh, connecting in okay. And it looks like we've got you back at this point. So bear with me two seconds while I transfer you over. And here we go. There we go. There you go. Fantastic. Um, love it, Greg. It was great tips, great strategies. And I it really, really made my day. Uh, but can I add three tips, what you were saying to that, uh, just on that note of strategies that you were telling the listeners and to everyone mm, who are listening. Please was brilliant to have your tips and strategies. It helped me as well, just doing those little things. We waking up and going to gym, but I think uh, the challenges that has got, um, for me, the tips for myself is same thing, what you said, achieving smaller goals and then capitalizing on those little goals, even like, you know, having 30 minutes of exercise or walking or whatever, going to that. But that challenge is always there. So I think for me, if I have to sum it up into three things is, or four things probably, my tips would be during this pandemic time and during this challenging time and any times, really speaking, not just this pandemic. Pandemic is just one of the things that came but uh, we are facing every single moment, no matter what situation we are in, we are facing challenges. And to me and to my is one thing, quickly communicate. Communication is the key. Communicate yourself, communicate with others, communicate with everyone. And that's the, my one tip would be immediate thing that comes to my mind. And the second thing is change your tradition follow-ups. So you don't have to be in the mindset of tradition. Just change it and just see how good it is. You don't have to be in the fear that if I change it, I will lose something or I will miss something. You're not going to lose. You're not going to miss anything because all that you have is memories. And memories, you have to create new memories. You can't just rely and depend on old memories. So I always say, change your tradition follow-ups. And then the third one is adapt, adaptation or adapting or flexibility to yourself and adapting yourself to all the whatever comes in your way as the universe is very kind for you. Even you don't ask things and yet they give you. 
at that time you don't complain when it is good and convenient for you but when it is not good and convenient for you then you complain so i personally feel universe has been very kind for everyone and for everyone there is something to do for everyone there is something to excel and i think this is where the power is but in your multifaceted life that i have seen and i have known you greg you have achieved so many multiple things and yet you keep going but the good thing is that is because you are empowering yourself and you are adapting to the new things we didn't knew whether we had to go and online and live to do this kind of sessions right but we are doing it and that's one of the good positive changes that we have come and embraced ourselves we have so adapting to whatever comes in your way is one of the third step that i would say and always the last thing is i always say my principles were built on three things my media also was built on three principles and that also i implement into my real life is information correct information awareness of that information and the internal and external support that we need so i would say ask for support for every time and any time there is no harm and there is no like you are not going to shock you are not going to be like uh, what you say making low or making um, cheap or making slow by saying or by asking support you are not going to you know put down yourself you are actually uplifting yourself by asking support people think if i ask support i am putting down myself when your ego comes in but i feel the other way around when you ask something mm-hmm. when you ask support actually you are uplifting yourself and you are uplifting others as well because you are appreciating the other people and so it's quite key thing for me so yeah communication change your tradition follow ups adaptation to the whatever comes and then asking for support and always ask because if you don't ask they also need support from you you don't know when you are asking actually they are asking the same thing from you but they are being shy i, I agree I, i've noticed that i've noticed that <laughs> completely and utterly i think one of the things is is that we always think that we are unique we always oh, think yeah. that our problems are bigger than somebody else's problems that everybody else has got that sorted and the answer yeah. is no every single one of us is stumbling through the dark just a moment Absolutely. away from falling uh and, Absolutely. and by taking the next step in fact that's how we walk our human beings are constantly falling forward that's how we walk uh, and yeah. the only a reason we don't fall over is because we remember to put a foot out in front of us to stop us <laughs> from falling over it's the weirdest <laughs> thing in the world if you look at the physics of a human being we just tilt tip ourselves over and then hopefully catch ourselves as we keep walking that's how we go through life and mm. we tend to then think that everyone else just mm. they can walk perfectly well they know exactly how yeah. to do this but you're right that, that that when we're looking for solutions other people around us are looking for uh either similar solutions or a Excellent. solution to a different challenge that they've got. Now I just had a question come in from uh, Baljit. Thank you very much indeed uh, Baljit. How can we stay motivated in an uncertain mm. world? Mm. Now it's a real poser I have to say. Staying motivated in an uncertain world is a really a really cool. I've got some ideas. Um Shalesh, what do you think? Yeah, it's a it's a good uh, good question Baljit. thank you very much for asking that and it's really a, a a real challenge that how do you feel motivated people ask me how do i f- be positive when there is so much negative around it how do i become more uh, resilient when there is so much fake news and everything going around how can i be positive it's same thing what she is asking is perfectly how do i get motivated during this uncertain times because there is so much challenges but my answer again goes back to the same thing and my my view will be the same thing is like always always think that every single moment that matters now is a challenge and the motivation for those moments is nobody else than other than you if you want to go to a gym you have to wake up and you have to go so motivation for you is you you don't look for motivation from somewhere else mm. because that's not going to happen and even if it happens it is 
their motivation for you to do and they are empowered but you have to empower yourself they are empowering themselves you have to empower yourself so i personally feel motivation in uncertain times is only when comes when you can empower yourself and you motivate yourself if you want to do something if you want to eat good food you motivate yourself and you take your time and you go to a restaurant right so why can't you do something each time each moment because i always say these are your leftover moments or beginning moments these are your moments and you have to motivate your moments yourself nobody is going to give you ice cream <laughs> <laughs> That's so so very very true, um, and I'm going to reiterate what you've just said as well because it really is about it's got to come from yourself. Uh, but I'll mm. also talk about this. It's sometimes really challenging for it to come from yourself, particularly when yeah. uh, you may be suffering depression, where you may be finding it very difficult just to keep going, just to keep on going. Uh, you know, e each time, mm. and the way that I have maintained a level of motivation, particularly in times where it's uh, hard, is yeah. I ask myself some questions. And the yeah. first of those questions is, uh, what is the best use of my time right now? Mm. It's a simple phrase and I say it out loud. I actually say this to myself, what is the best use of my time right now? Mm. And what that has a tendency to do is to bring my challenges into a, a, a position where I can actually see them. So instead of being having a scattergun approach or thinking that you know everything's too too large, and the other one is, does this help me or does this hinder me? So is it a helpful thing or is it a negative thing? And by actually sure. saying this out loud and thinking about it, you're able to make a, a a decision and a judgment about what you're doing at that particular point in time from a motivation standpoint. How can we continue to grow? Can you continue to move forward? Um, in mm -hmm. challenging and uncertain times. And the other factor here is stick with the things that you are certain about. So if you if you have stability in a certain area, try and uh, st stay within that area and use it as a base. So that mm -hmm. even in these times where things, are, you, you don't want a million things being uncertain. So if you've got something that's at least uh, stable, you can start from a stable platform and then start mm -hmm. little, making little inroads here, 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 uh, moving forward. Uncertainty is challenging, but on the flip side of it, uncertainty has got opportunity in it. Absolutely. That's when things are, are shaken up. Mm. That's when mm. uh, it is actually easier to make changes to uh, mm. your own circumstances and for other people in uncertain mm. times because the norms have changed. We don't, a uh, perfect example is I traveled to back to the UK uh, when I was in my early 20s. And when I arrived in the UK, I had an immigrant's mindset. I was going back to where I was originally from, but my thought process was completely different. And so as a consequence, there, were, there was no constraints on me in terms of what I could do. And I started working for a company and the first time they, the, I was approached about doing a particular job and I said I was going to do it in a certain way. And they said, oh, you can't do that. Uh, it's always been done like this. And they were telling me, <laughs> you know, this is how we work around here. This is the way we do things. But I was coming in with a different mindset. I was coming with a different attitude and ideas and looking at it from a completely different angle and going, that's so uh, mm. nowhere near good enough. It's going to take me longer. It's going to cost you more. It's, and so, but I've got a better idea and we'll do it like this. And because I wasn't of that culture, I'd, I'd had the culture bred out of me by being in New Zealand. Yeah. I was able to look at things with a different set of eyes. And in mm. uncertainty, your mm. situation here allows you to look at it from a positive standpoint. So mm. the idea is to spin it from a negative standpoint to a positive standpoint and see how well we can take advantage of these new opportunities that we find around ourselves. Yeah, and I guess just to add on that, like uh, just to motivate with Baljit, was, uh, I can further say that, you know, Saran, this is the good time when you are uncertain to take your own decisions about who do you want to be around you, who all you need around you, and what sort of elimination you can do around you.
so that you are always focused on you and your positivity and your motivation things that you want to do so you surround the people around you with those people that you want to make things happen so that you are never into that uncertain mode you are always certain that i have someone to go to i have someone to talk to you know and that is the most comfortable thing that you can do during uncertain times is eliminate all the things that you don't want that don't matter moments that matters is completely is aligned to this motivation question of baljit that these moments are yours you are the creator you are the initiator and you can surround the people around you for motivate yourself and you around you so that's my further <laughs> <laughs> well let's further actually a, a perfect that. opportunity for us to uh, uh, come to a close um we've uh, been online for almost 75 minutes um now which is a significantly right. long time for a for a webinar and hopefully what we've discussed here and what we've shared here will have had mm. some uh, impact for our audience to be able to actually look at the situation you're currently in mm. benchmark it and go right mm. is this yeah. is this helpful is this a hindrance is this something mm. that is positive or is it negative what are the micro goals that i can achieve where am yeah. i what are the, what's my next step and in uncertainty comes opportunity to be able to have mm. a, 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 a stable base but also to be able to move from there shalesh yeah. i have to say thank you so very, last yes can please, i say the right. last word yes please can i have the last word you okay may. the last word that i can say is like take all the good things that are around you you look around you all the scientists all the researchers all the people that are working during this uncertain times is there is one statement i can say straight away is do not give up on anything that would be my last word because all these people that we are around us are working to make us safe to make us safe the nation and everyone that means they are not giving up so you don't give up that's my last word could be and that shows is like a kindness is attached to it because once you are kind to yourself you will never give up if you are not kind to yourself you will give up simple as that Oh, 100%. I cannot do anything but agree with that statement. You have to stop for a moment and actually look at yourself and go, "Hey." Mm. Uh and as as um emotional as this is, um I had mm. to go through as this process of actually getting to like me. And it took me mm. a long time. I was it a lot of different circumstances that happened through my life. But what I found really valuable, mm. very challenging, but very valuable was actually using mm. the mirror and mm. looking at myself in a mirror and saying the words i love you yeah. to myself yeah. in the mirror and that's a challenge that i'm going to ask all of our audience to actually <laughs> do this that's a, that's very good it's Ab and actually absolutely. mean it to stand there because it's very and easy stand there, yeah. to do the negative self talk and we talk to ourselves all the time in a very negative way mm. but to sit mm. there looking at yourself deep in your own eyes and mm. saying i love you to the person who you should yeah. love the most that's that's you you just all starts there um that's a real challenge um i'm going to stick yeah. keep you online for 2 seconds here because uh, baljit has just uh, posed a uh, statement/question slash question, which is this mm. so someone being a migrant who goes about making a better life we're thinking about applying for benefits that the state offers um they are in the majority great assets to make new zealand grow and i, I completely and 100% agree with this migrants mm. make the country we are all immigrants every single one of us in this country new zealand came from somewhere mm. else we arrived yep. here and you know as a consequence the power that we have as migrants is mm. phenomenal um so what's your thought about about uh, uh from as as, yeah. as migrants applying for state benefits what you know what's our what's well the thing see about? this is where i was saying to you when i came here it's the people people not even don't know that our nation is a state welfare country mm. or a state welfare nation and people who come from uh, democratic capitalist or communist or whatever country and they don't have the state welfare situation 
they are not aware of it and they feel like uh, their ego comes in and they don't want to apply or they feel shy to apply and they feel that it is a disgrace to apply or they feel guilty about applying. All of these negatives that comes in their minds. And I think, so as you rightly said, we all are migrants. The person who is there in the state office is also a migrant. The person who gives benefit is also a migrant. And people should never forget that they are there for a reason. They are not there for just giving food or giving this on the straight. No, it's not. They are there to empower everyone, to give a better start on their life mm. or in between if their hurdles are there. When there is a rain, your whole house washes up. What's going to happen if your rain takes, a thunderstorm takes your house? Yep. You, you can't build on your own. So you need support, you need help. And that's where these states welfare services are there. So don't ever feel guilty or shy. In fact, may I would go one step ahead. Take the kickstart, do better and actually empower others and help others with your business, with your uh, development. And then you see the development and I think, uh, if I'm correct in saying that most of our good people who have made difference to our nation, including prime ministers and ex-prime ministers, were also a part of the state housing services that they took as a child. So there is nothing wrong in it. There is nothing bad in it. In fact, it's they are looking at doing better, better ways of doing things and how they can help better so that people don't get missed out. People don't, uh, people who are underprivileged and during this uncertain time, there are a lot of people who are, as you said, vulnerable. People are vulnerable and they don't think. They don't think, they don't know what mm. to do. They don't know where to go. That's where these services are there for you to help and for you to get the clarity. So always seek for support. As I always say, that's my tip was to support, take support, take help. Don't worry. State services is the best thing that this country has got and acknowledge it, appreciate it, and make it the most of it of those services. Don't rely on it. Don't depend on it. But I would say take the kickstart from it and actually make a better for others and for yourself. Because you grow, you will make grow other people. 100%. 100%. And that's a beautiful note <laughs> for us to conclude our session. Shalish, uh, thank you very, very much indeed for uh, joining us here. Thanks uh, for the wonderful opportunity that uh, you engendered as well with the uh, Waitakere Ethnic Board um, and uh, Aotearoa Academy and yourself and myself. And of course, uh, yeah. we'll be extending out to the speakers who will be joining us here um, on stage in the coming days. Um, so thank you once again. Really appreciate your time. It's been a pleasure. No talking with you. Thanks, Jalesh. Yeah, thank you so much, Greg, for this wonderful series that you have kick-started it. And yes, it was uh, a good idea from coming from our Aurora Academy and from myself when I spoke to you and then spoke to Baljit. And Baljit is a great, I would really, really appreciate her um, absolute support that she has given to kick-start this series yes. and realizing how important it is during this time realizing the facts and reality. So these are real experiences we are talking and you, I'm sure you will be asking a lot of other speakers, guest speakers coming along and sharing their life experiences, which will be a great thing for many people who are watching. But once again, I really humbly appreciate your effort to make it happen and Baljit, to make this happen. So thank you very much for Waitakari Ethnic Board. And you being a Waitakari, ex-Waitakari, it's uh, really good <laughs> to see that uh, putting together everything. So now I appreciate, and I also thank all my Autorua Academy trustees who also supported me in initiating this. And so it was great for me to just do it. So thanks once again, Greg. And I look forward for your future series myself as a spectator and asking questions. Yes, please. I'd love that. It'd be absolutely yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. Thanks, Shalesh. We'll catch you very soon indeed. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks very much.
So there we go, our inaugural presentation here, Moments That Matter, coming to you live via the Waitakere Ethnic Board. Massive thank you to Foundation North for uh, uh, providing some funding to ensure that we can actually put this together. Uh, the Aotearoa Academy for uh, the connection point right at the start, and of course the great work that they do. Um, it's been my pleasure joining you here. Um, thanks once again to uh, Shavesh Bagwe. And uh, we will be catching you at 10 a.m. next Wednesday. Our next speaker is Filippo Levi. Um, he is a uh, former captain of uh, Manu Samoa. Uh, he is a phenomenal mindset coach. He is a sports person uh, and uh, has an, a great amount of international experience as well. Cannot wait to have him join us here for the session next week. Uh, my name is Greg Ward, and this has been Moments That Matter with the Waitakere Ethnic Board. Cheers. We'll see you next Wednesday at 10 a.m.